Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another Blender Daily Tip and today we're going to be looking at how to create uh, this effect here, just a uh, uh, smashing through glass effect uh, using Blender 2.8. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's get into it and uh, get started. So I'll just open up a new Blend file here, a Blender project here, and uh, we're going to use an add-on called uh, Fracture. Uh, so it's an, it's a, it comes with shipped with Blender, so you don't have to download it or anything. You just go, just have to go under Edit Preferences, uh, Add-ons, and then type in Fracture. Uh, it's called Cell Fracture, and uh, you will access it under Object quick effects are uh, so fracture so uh, let's create the glass effect the glass we are going to break here so i'll just add a plane uh, scale it up maybe something like that i'm also going to subdivide this screen so that i can have uh, this side here as the preview area uh, i will set up my camera just change the settings here something like just want it to be vertical yeah, so this is going to be our uh, glass. I'll also rotate it 90 degrees. Now to fracture it, uh, we can add, uh, we can add, we, we can, uh, the way the cell fracture works is that uh, you can use different techniques to break up uh, the, uh, the glass. Uh, but uh, if you want to determine how uh, the different, how the glass is supposed to break, uh, you can use uh, the annotation brush, or if you're using Blender 2.79 uh, and below, you, it's called uh, the glaze pencil. Uh, but uh, yeah, so just draw a pattern uh, that you want uh, to have the, the glass break, break into. So if you want, say, if you want the object to hit around this area, you just draw a circle right like this, and then start drawing in uh, the patterns, the break patterns uh, you want. But I, I want it, I want this to be uh, near the center, so I'll just undo that and uh, kind of draw uh, the patterns like that. I don't remember why you have to kind of put in these dots here and in different spots, uh, but uh, yeah, you do that as well. I'm not sure why. I don't remember why you do that, but uh, yeah, there is a reason to do that. So yeah, now that we have our pattern, uh, we can come in. You can also add a solidify modifier to this, uh, to this object here. Uh, before, uh, because we want this to have some kind of thickness. Uh, right now, it's just a single plane. Uh, so let's add a solidify modifier. And uh, if you look at uh, my example here, you can see that uh, the glass has a different material to the thickness. It's a bit more greenish. Uh, there, so we're going to create uh, two materials for that. Uh, let me just divide this as well and uh, add uh, the material shader editor here. Uh, so we're going to have two materials. Uh, one uh, for the uh, glass itself and then uh, for the glass thickness. So I'll call this okay. glass. And simply give it, let me change this to rendered mode. Uh, maybe increase uh, the thickness as well a bit. So this is going to be glass and uh, I'm just giving it a transmission of something like 0.9. So that is transparent. Let me move my camera a bit like this, rotate it. And uh, so we are not seeing the effect right now. Let me change to this uh, look there. And uh, if you want to, to have the glass be transparent, you can turn on screen space reflections. And uh, under that, you can turn on also refractions. And uh, under the material settings or options, uh, you can turn on uh, screen space refractions and uh, the glass should be refractive. Uh, the problem now is that uh, we don't have anything to refract uh, behind. So if we add, say, an a sphere like that, you can see how uh, the glass is transparent. Uh, the problem now is the reference is too high, so we can just reduce that like so. 
so that's one material. Now we make the thickness material. So I'll just add another glass material. Yes, duplicate that. Uh, this time I'm going to give it a color, a greenish color. And uh, I want it to be green, darker green. And uh, in the settings here, uh, solidify settings, you can select uh, the material you want to use for this uh, thickness here uh, by changing the index here. So we have an index of zero to whatever you want. So uh, this is uh, the indice, indices assigned indexes assigned to uh, this material. So this first material has the index of zero and this one has an index of one. So go back to the material settings and set uh, the index to have a material of one like that. Is it? I think actually it's supposed to be uh, the rim should get uh, an index of one because uh, this side here is the rim or the thickness here. So let's go in and start using the fracture modifier, the structure, fracture cell uh, add-on. So just go on an object, quick effects cell fracture, and that to use uh, this uh, annotation drawing, uh, we just have to select annotation here, and uh, it will take that in into consideration and break uh, this into that pattern. Uh, you can also change uh, the size here to be random, uh, and I think that's all. Uh, now to to give to give uh, these particles, as you can see, each particle to have a thickness of that material. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, you check, you give this a different index. Index. So an index of one are uh, the same as our rim index here. And now I think uh, that will be it. You just hit OK and uh, the fracture modifier will start doing its own uh, thing, uh, breaking up everything. So I just need to give it a few more seconds and uh, it's done. So I will hide uh, the original. Yes, and you can see that uh, there are more broken up particles at the center here than uh, anywhere else because of the pattern we drew. Uh, so we can turn off the annotation by just hitting N on your keyboard and go under, I think it's under tools, and just disable that annotation layer. If you want to bring it back, you just uh, unhide that again. So now that we have that, you can see that uh, if I just isolate this, you can see that the thickness has a different material. So let me just make it a little bit more pronounced so that you can see, you see, it has its own material and that's what we want. So let me unhide this. And uh, I don't want, because when the, when the fracture modifier is done working, it unhides, sorry, it retains uh, the original object, uh, which is this, uh, and, and I don't want that uh, to be around, so I'll just hide uh, that. And I'm also going to select all these particles and group them into a different layer so that if I want to select them, I'll just uh, select them, select uh, that uh, collection. So yeah, like that. Uh, so right now, if we play back, you see nothing happens because uh, we haven't set up any physics uh, for these uh, particles. So you can select one particle like this and then go under the uh, physics tab and uh, give it a rigid body dynamic settings. And if you play back, you can see it just falls down. So uh, then we can, uh, what else do we need to change here? I think that's it. Uh, but uh, so now to give these, all the particles the same physics particle, the same physics settings, rigid body setting, I just have this as the active object and then select the rest of the ob other objects and go under object, uh, find rigid body and then uh, copy active, copy from active which will copy all the rigid body settings uh, from the active uh, from the active object you can see now each of these has uh, those rigid body settings so if we play back they will all just fall down uh, but that's not what we want uh, so we can go into the 
scene settings and the turn on and the rigid body settings are because the gravity is making these fall down and we don't want that. So go under the rigid body settings and the turn off under field weights, turn off the gravity so that it doesn't fall so so that nothing falls down. So we need a, now we need a particle, we need an object uh, to kind of uh, break this uh, glass. So what we do, we can add, I use the, a torus uh, for this, so I'll just use it again here. Let me just use that, another object. Uh, yeah, I'll use the Suzanne monkey, or monkey head. So now to kind of make that projectile, uh, kind of, I'm not going to animate this because if you look at my example, my original example, you can see that uh, this is not animated. Uh, so if I wanted, uh, say, you see, uh, if I reduce its uh, uh, mass, you can see that will also be added into the animation, considered into the physics. You know, I think to make our example, our version more, even more better, I'm just going to add, to model a, a glass. So I think it will sell the effect even more. So let me just create a simple glass here. Nothing fancy, just something very basic like that. And uh, if I add a solidify modifier, <coughs> I don't think we, we even need a solidify modifier, we just need to give it something that make it low like volume and uh, give it uh, the glass material we have. I think I'll give it this. And now, we, let me also reset uh, the origin to geometry so that is our center of masses uh, there. Uh, so now to make it, in, to turn it into a projectile, we just need to animate it animate uh, its initial, to, to give it some initial velocity by animating it for a few seconds and let uh, physics take uh, take uh, yeah, take action from there. So so we can start at uh, this frame here, uh, add a few keyframes, uh, add a keyframe like that, and then at around 10 seconds, we can move it forward, maybe give it a slight rotation, something like that. that has, let me think we'll give it an, uh, enough push. Um, now we just need to animate uh, the physics property here. I see we have the animation uh, button here. So this will enable uh, this to be calculated as a physics uh, object, uh, but uh, also maintaining uh, the animation as well. So uh, if we had this, let me just go to the curves editor. Uh, let me find uh, the y, the x location. So I just this here. Move it a bit forward. You can see if I did that, you can see how it breaks up uh, the object. Uh, the problem is that uh, after the animation is done, it just pauses mid air, uh, which is something we don't want. So let me reset back this back to its original position and I also you no know I don't I only need uh, the X direction so I can go in and uh, delete all the other keyframes and uh, now I can position these let me first switch off the keyframes I can position position these on any of the other axes uh, without affecting uh, the animation so I don't want it to pause mid-air. Uh, I also deleted uh, the rotation. So let me bring that back, add that back. Break. 
right? So now to animate, to, to, to turn this into a, project, object, a projector so that it doesn't just pause mid-air, uh, we can animate uh, this animation uh, property here. So let me add a keyframe around there. Actually, yeah, I think I can add it around there. And then just about here, before we pause, uh, I can animate this and switch it off. I'll make sure I assign that keyframe. And now you can see we get that. It bounces off, breaks the glass and bounces off. Let me reduce the scale of this. So if you want to scale this down without affecting uh, the keyframes here, because if I started scaling this down, it will just snap back. Let me pull it. Oh, uh, because I deleted uh, the scale keyframes, uh, those keyframes have not keep been, uh, when I scale this up and down, it's not affecting the keyframes here because yeah, I don't have uh, the scale keyframes, I only have the location. So I want this to be small enough, something like that. You can see how that breaks up the glass. I don't know, I think I like it better when it, I like it when it uh, doesn't break off like that. It doesn't go through. I mean, if you want it to go through, you just have to increase uh, its mass here, let's say two by two and now you can see you can it would break in uh, but I think I like it better when it doesn't it just bounces off like that so now you can add in the effects the same effects I added in here uh, to make it even look cooler so for that what I did maybe let me I don't want this to be too long so I'll just do a second part uh, for adding the effects to make it as cool as it looks here so I thought